Good evening, everyone. Okay, thank you for your time and your space. My name is Professor Joseph Tepe from Baker, the Bakersfield College Art Department. And welcome to the second day of the second annual Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month Conference. Um, so you can support AAPI Heritage all year long by being anti-racist and standing up and speaking out against AAPI hate advocating for AAPI rights at the local and national level and supporting AAPI creators like tonight's guests. So we have uh, with us an amazing artist and creator, Donald Fan. Donald is a professional artist who has worked in the video game industry for over 15 years. Wow. He has worked with, on various projects for EA, Blizzard, Valve, and is currently contracted by Riot Games. Donald holds a BA in digital art from George Mason University, and aside from 3D character art, he also enjoys film, photography, figure drawing, and painting from life. Oh, painting from life, oh, so important. Donald is a first generation American and Chinese, first generation American of Chinese and Vietnamese descent and currently resides in Orange County. Thank you, Donald. Thank you, Professor Tate. Uh... I'm happy to be here. Uh, it's an honor to speak in front of everyone here. Um, so yeah, 15 years, that's uh, it's like not a number I like to think about because it makes me feel old and I mean, obviously not young here, but um, maybe I'll share my screen and we can go over some of my parts um, for now. And I mean, we'll start from the beginning. Uh, like was previously mentioned, I started off at EA um, and I did hand paint textures a long time ago. So this is like all super last gen uh, kind of work, a lot of painting. Um, and then from there, I went to Arena Nets up in like the Seattle, Washington area. Um, and that's where I worked on Guild Wars. And I had a very unique opportunity to design as well as build um, the costumes and design characters there, which is actually very rare. Like usually the disciplines are very separate and I don't consider myself a designer, um, so to speak. So it was a blessing to be able to do this. Also a little frustrating because it's, Design is, is actually pretty hard. Um, so from after Guild Wars, I went freelance for a little bit and I started doing workshops up for Valve for Dota 2. Um, if, um, the, for those of you who aren't uh, aware, like uh, Valve has a workshop system where basically anyone can contribute you know, items to the game, and you basically submit, and you cross your fingers, and you hope uh, Lord Gaben blesses you with, like, uh, an acceptance into the workshop, and, you know, you get paid uh, a few months later. So a lot of this, too, was a very unique opportunity where I was able to design as well as model and, and texture. I don't know how many um, of you here are, you know, looking into games as a career in the kind of disciplines but you know we can talk about you know there's a way more than just design work and modeling work uh, available uh, and then after that i went to freelance for blizzard on overwatch um, this was the first asset i ever made um, back in 2014 um, and i had been with blizzard off and on since 2014 up until about two months ago so I spent quite a bit of time on Overwatch. Um, the more early work with Hanzo here. This is probably like the most difficult project I've ever worked on in my entire career. So if you're looking at a lot of paint, the, the final outcome was a lot of, uh, of a lot of pain here, but I think um, it paid off in the end. Um, let's see, there's young Anna in the 
early days of Overwatch. And Witch Mercy. And at the top is just like random side projects I've done over the years, like just a quick anatomy study that I turned into the materials test. Um, you know, sometimes I look for, when I find concepts from other artists that and I think they're really interesting, like I'll tr give it a try to recreate it in 3D. Um, most of the time when I'm doing personal art, I'm looking to do something that I haven't really done before. Uh, so that means like, you know, like, all these sections are, they, they got themes, right? Um, but like, I've never done like a hyper-realistic character for like a game. Um, and I went through the process of trying to just do one on my own. And it was a lot of work and I just never ended up finishing it. But this is about as far as I got. Um, and then just like, just trying to refine my sense of uh, stylized shapes. Some dramatic lighting tests. Um, yeah, that's a uh, that's like a kind of a brief overview of my professional work. I don't know how much uh, you'd like me to focus on this, uh, or did you want to like talk about other parts of the gaming industry? We have a quick question that we can since we're talking about the gaming uh -oh. industry. Um, uh, did you work on Overwatch too? Yes. Um, so the I got moved over to Overwatch 2 really late. Um, I actually did a lot of props for it, but the where is it? <laughs> the one and only thing I did uh, was Hanzo his redesign. And this is like the only screenshot that is available right now. So we'll have to wait a few. I don't know how long. It, Blizzard will take before they um they finally release like all of it. But this is uh, this is my one and only Overwatch two asset as far as characters goes. Nice. So what what led you to art as a path? Like this is what is a uh, and this is a uh, going far back. So this is definitely you've gotten so I many. This is way way far right in your career. I mean, for us looking over here as, uh, you know, beginning students uh, and beginning artists and stuff like that, like you're at this top peak, but how did it all start? Like what, what led you down this path initially? Uh, uh, it's kind of embarrassing. Um, when I was younger, I just wanted to be like my brother. He was, he was four years older than me and he was like the artist in the family. So I just copied him for a while, right? And I copied him, and then that led into, you know, me growing up as a giant weeb and doing fan art for all sorts of, like, embarrassing, uh, <laughs> embarrassing TV shows at this point. Um, and I think uh, once I hit high school, that's kind of when I started looking at it as a way of actually reconnecting with my culture. Um, you know, growing up as, you know, a, a first generation uh, Asian American, uh, we were actually sort of isolated from the Asian community, even though there was like a huge Asian community around me. Uh, but we didn't really, my family we just, we just kept to ourselves a lot. And um, all I had were TV shows that I had watched, like Kung Fu shows from Hong Kong. And I grew up watching that for you know, repeatedly you know, watching the same thing over and over. And that just led to me trying to connect with that. Um, eventually that didn't, I stopped doing that because um, as I got older and I started actually connecting with Asians, um, there was a little bit of judgment because I wasn't considered like truly Asian enough uh you know my chinese was you know objectively really bad my vietnamese i could only like understand so um like anytime it just it was just like a weird thing right like 
I'd have, you know, teachers or like classmates say like, why do you always draw Asian people, right? And then, you know, the Asian people were like, well, you can't even read, you know, you can't even write. And so like it, it got a little weird for me. So like, I just kind of distanced myself with that over time. Um, but then, yeah, that, yeah, that's how I started really. So, um, so let's, let's take a look at your portfolio because we have a, your, your personal portfolio. I mean, we love the gaming, any gaming questions out there, we can always uh, come back to this, uh, cause this stuff is amazing. And, um, but, uh, let's talk about this journey because this is, this is where we end up at, but how did this all start? How did it all start? Uh, hmm, how did it start? Let's. Let's start with like the, where I am now, and I can embarrass myself with like how I truly started a little bit later. <laughs> Perfect, yeah, you start um, high, go low. <laughs> so art, you know, I've, I've had a kind of a long and contentious history with it. Um, it's, you know, been the source of a lot of frustration, but it's also been a very, like, I'm not sure what I would do without it. Um, uh, so, and I guess to that point, um, drawing has always been something that, like, I always pursued it when I was younger, but I can't say that I was very good at it. And as I, even as, when I got to become a professional, like, it always bothered me in the back of my mind that, like, I couldn't draw very well, right? And for some reason, I latched onto that and I thought that that was like the key to me being truly better was like being better at that foundational fundamental drawing. Um, oh, and over time, you know, I've spent, you know, hours uh, looking at different methodologies. Like I've gone through different techniques, um, different schools of thoughts and like it, I don't know, it, it was very, like I needed it. There, I can't deny how important something like, especially like figure drawing. And figure drawing is like not even truly important to like the field or even to getting a job. But I felt like um, everything I actually know about art, I learned it through studying the human figure, right? And it also got to a point where it was also it was very therapeutic. Like no matter what was happening in my life, uh, good or bad, I always had drawing. I always had figure drawing, um, and I could just sit down, and it, it was like very meditative. You know, like especially you know going to a live figure session. Um, there's nothing but you, your, you know, newsprint pad and the model, and that's it. Like everyone else sort of like fades away as you, and all you have to do is communicate, you know, what is the model doing? Um, how do I interpret it? You know, how do I show this to the viewer in a way that is, you know, engaging? And I've also dabbled in painting. Um, these are quick studies. I think these are like maybe half, half an hour. Um, little thumbnails. Uh, Somebody out there said, I struggle with drawing. What is your, so how do you suggest, like, where, where do you start? So where's the best place to start if you're struggling with drawing? If you're struggling with drawing. Oh, man. Would you say figure or would you jump down to like very basic uh, foundational, you know, still lives and stuff like that or a balance of both? Um... I want to say the figure because I, I know myself back then, like still lives were pain and like, I've gotten better at detaching myself and looking at it in a different way, but it, it's hard to deny that looking at, um, looking at, a looking at a still life is like, just not very compelling. Right. And it's actually really hard to do it in a way that is engaging to the viewer. 
right? And also engaging to you as the artist, the one who's actually putting your time into it. And with the, the figure, I feel like you can take that in so many different ways. You don't have, you're not really beholden to any style. Um, and even if you don't feel like um, that you want to do like, like something super re representational, then that's completely fine as well. Like it's, like I think, um, I see it as there's no truer test of learning how to see than trying to learn how to see another human being, right? Because, you know, we grow up um, and we are all, we all have these like icon iconography, like these symbols that represent, oh, what an eye is or what a human is. And everyone's like really good at identifying when something is off. But they don't really know when, um, like how to fix it or what exactly is like the problem, right? So I think the human figure for me will always be, you know, the the, the true source of, of all art. Beautiful. So how did college prepare you? Um, <laughs> or... College. Oh man. Oh, yeah. Not. Answer it however you want to. Yeah. This is a college format, but keep it real. College did not prepare me. Um, so I didn't go to an art school. Uh, and I went to a four-year degree, like a regular four-year four -year university out in Virginia where I grew up. And a lot of that, part of that was because um, my parents, they would not let me get, go out of state and they would not let me go to art school. Because like one, one kid in art was bad enough you know, two kids in art was like even worse. And um, there, was, there was no way that that tuition would have been ever a, a factor. Um, but uh, I guess, you know, let's it, it's kind of like back out of this, but like, so, um, this, is, this is where all like the, wait, this is not exactly everything, but, um, Let's let's pull uh, this one. So this is you know, kind of what I was mentioning when in high school, like I was trying to reacquaint myself with uh, like a lot of martial arts and like a lot of Chinese culture that way. So this was high school, right? Uh, I wouldn't say this is good in any way. This, but I can show you what I did in college, and this was college. So I got objectively worse like I um granted like you know there's a discrepancy of like how much time I invested on these right but like still I don't know what happened like I but I know this is from my college sketchbooks right and it's like it's terrible uh I haven't seen anyone else's work here but I know you can do better than this um uh, you probably could have done better in this like 10 years ago right but like something happened, right? And I think when I, as I was putting some of these images together, I, I was like thinking about like, well, what happened? Like, how did I actually get worse when I got to college? Um, and I think it was uh, the fact that college, they didn't, first of all, you know, I didn't really, I wasn't in an environment that was conducive to art, right? My parents were against it. Um, and then my school itself, like they were, totally also against it like they they wanted everyone to be like an abstract expressionist they wanted everyone to be in like a gallery setting and it mattered more how you could talk about your art than it did how you could execute on your art and so like i think there was like a floundering of like me trying to figure out like what where i fit into this um and i just yeah i did i did really really bad in college um you know, towards the end, I feel like it, it turned around a little bit, and I wish I had an example of that. Like, um, I don't want to dig around for it right now, but like, like I think the difference between the early college and late college is like drastically different. Because like somewhere in between, I think I figured it out or figured it out something that was working for me. Because like I wasn't getting any help from from school at all, right? Um, mm, my school was also very against the idea of commercial art 
in art, like entertainment art as like a profession because it was a lower form of art. And that was also something I really, really struggled with. Um, I always wanted to go to art school, um, but I, again, like I, that wasn't an option for me, but you know, I, I graduated with not a whole lot of debt and I somehow weaseled my way into the working world anyway. So like it kind of all worked out, right? But, you know, like years down the line, you know, we're on this discussion of like school and art school and colleges is that I can't in good conscience though, like recommend anyone go through art school, especially right now. Like the cost of art school outweighs any benefit, right? And the real benefit to art school is gonna be, you have a structured program, but as someone who is actually taught at an art school, that structure program is probably way out of date, right? Um, and, you know, I, I ran into issues where the, like this is an art school that has a, an official game art program, but all the advice that teachers were giving my students, like were, was counterproductive to get them getting a job. So yeah, there was, there was just like a lot of struggles there as a, as a teacher and as someone who was genuinely invested in seeing the, in seeing my students succeed. Like it's just, there's just like so, so many things about art education that I feel like needs to be reconsidered and reevaluated. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know, we, we could talk about that in this, uh, this panel as well, but um, there are other avenues for sure, outside of being one hundred fifty thousand to two hundred thousand dollars in debt after you graduate. Yeah, that's the biggest misconception because I think folks kind of think that I have to get into an art, actual art school in a gaming field, right, to be in the game industry. But obviously, that's not true. Yeah, and I know a lot of people who either dropped out of art school, dropped out of school, um, they you know, went to school for something completely different and, you know, they made it fine, right? There's, there's no doubt there's like a, an appeal to going to art school and there's an appeal to having like, you know, a cohort where everyone is like, like-minded and stuff like that. But man, that's like an expensive price tag. And it's just, I can't, I can't justify it. <laughs> we have a good question. Did your parents accept your career choice? Eventually, uh, no, no, they did not. So, like, I, they were surprisingly okay with me trying to pull a fast one on them because I went through most of college being undeclared, and I told them that like I would figure it out later, and like, but I was structuring my entire like all my classes to be like an art student, like to to be like an art major, and I mean it was totally obvious. There's no way I could hide that, right? At art supplies, there's like, there's nothing, uh, but they, they accepted it anyway. And back then my, my dream was to go into feature animation as a modeler. Um, but I graduated and I really didn't have much of a portfolio because again, like just to, just to go back a little bit, like both college and both art school, you will probably not graduate with the portfolio that will work like you can all that i'm sorry to say but all that work that you put into your senior year once you graduate you might as well just throw that out and start something new because like there's that's the time for you to apply everything that you learn and for me i had to do that like i couldn't use anything from school at all um so uh I graduated and my parents gave me like a three month ultimatum that if I didn't get a job within three months that they would send me back to school for a real degree. And that's when I guess I, uh, um, I worked on, this is really small, but You can tell how, how old this is by like how small this image is. But like, 
EA was right around the corner. They were working a Warhammer game. And I had nothing, I had no idea what to do when it came to video game art. But um, I made this guy. I think I might even have some former students in here so like they can laugh at my college work is their college work was way is way better than what I was doing this is post college right so I had no idea what to do about video game work um none of this was like technically correct at all but <laughs> it was enough um to get me an art test for that same company and so this is the art test that led me to an internship that led me to a job um and it wasn't actually this that got me that art test. It was this in some of my drawings from, because like by that time, like I had sort of, I'd gotten a lot better at, at drawing. Um, please, please don't take this for representative of like my entire <laughs> artistic ability back then. But, um, but yeah, so like that, but even when I got that job and I became established in my career, my mom would always call me and tell me to, to go to night school for like a backup degree. So for a backup job in case like I just failed at this, like she thought it was a fad. She didn't think this was like a, a real thing at all. Uh, I mean, thankfully at, at this point, uh, she stopped being worried about that and it's all sort of worked out, but it was rough in the beginning. We have another uh, question out there. Um... Do you have any mentors? Um, my biggest mentor is my older brother. He taught me everything I know. And which, if I have this up, it's kind of embarrassing um, for him because he's always been significantly better than I am. Um, but, and this is also not representative of his skills either. But, um, I mean, not only did he teach me Art, but I think he taught me a lot about how to sort of interact on a professional level with other people. And um, there's a, you know, I think there are a lot of things that go into your career. And like your art skill is obviously one of them, but your interpersonal skills are another, right? And that's a very hard thing to learn until you get into the industry. Um, but I will say that even college is probably like a good testing ground for that, right? Like, uh, like how are you treating your classmates? You know, are you, if a classmate needs help, are you able to help them? If, if not directly, can you point them in the right direction? Um, how do you communicate with your teachers, right? Whether your teacher is a working professional or, um, or what have you, um, there's a lot to learn from each interaction day to day. And I can't stress how important that is because like, even if you, after all this, like even if you don't decide to go into games and you're like, well, I want to be like a freelance artist, right? I'll be a freelance illustrator, this or that. Like those interpersonal skills, I promise you, pay off in that respect too. Because I've gone down the freelance route and those like hard, those like soft skills of dealing with people who are probably going to try and rip you off, um, which isn't like a guarantee, but like it will happen in your career. Um, you know, like negotiating your rates and like dealing with like, if you're behind on the schedule and like just working with someone else, that's like working with your teacher, right? Like if something happens, at school uh, and you're falling behind, like the teacher can't give you any leniency or any grace if you don't come forth and, you know, put your cards on the table as well, right? So there's like, I think he taught me a lot about stuff like that. I feel like any, every colleague I've had in my professional life has taught me a great deal. Um, I think there are some in here right now, um, but you know, you, there's so much to learn and it's impossible to do this on your own. It's the, the idea of a self-taught artist is kind of a fallacy, I think. Um, but yeah, there's, I, I can't name them all. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a good one. Having a lot of mentors, right? Or having a lot of people around you to support you. 
um, and many different things. We have another question. This is a this is a really good question. How do you deal with art block? No, that's like I don't know, like every other week for me. I don't know. Um, what do I do? So I think I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of curiosity. So like I just like art in general, right? So it's not limited to drawing, it's not limited to painting or um and like anything like that, but like I I feel like it's always like a switch that's on my head. So I'm always like when I'm out or if I'm just like even looking around my apartment, the sun comes in, it hits like the corner of the table and, and like there's like an interesting shadow cast. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. You know, I'll either sit there and I'll I'd, like admire it or I'll take a picture. Like I'll, I'm really into film photography. So, and that's been very different from digital photography. Like the, the final output and all that, the, the actual process is, is very different. So like, I feel like I'm always thinking about it, even if I'm not actively working on it, right? So that, that helps me to like kind of reset and not think so much about, um, oh, I need to be productive, right? Because like, I, I think that in itself is a trap. So like, I need to be productive all the time. And it's taken me years and years to get over the fact that I'm not, my output doesn't match like certain colleagues or even like, you, you hop on our station and then just like, wow, so-and-so did another like fully rendered, like perfect piece of work. And like, they've done four of these and I've done nothing, right? And, but then, you know, that everyone's got, you know, different drives and they've got different circumstances and like, it's, that's not a healthy comparison. And if anything, that's gonna make you, give you more anxiety and I'll give you, that art block of yours is gonna continue if you continue to think that way. Um, so yeah, just do, do other things that don't limit yourself to just one medium or, or one subject matter. That's a good one. All right. I get that a lot. How do you do with art block and you know, live your life a little bit. <laughs> if you're stuck staring at that paper, it's probably not going to come like go take a walk. Um, styles. This is a good question about style. What are your thoughts on developing a specific art style? I struggle finding an art style, but I came to terms not having one um that's important to different degrees to different career paths right for me it actually is beneficial that i don't really have an art style like if you look at this page um aside from the fact there are similarities between different projects like overall there is nothing that really ties them together um and this is actually how probably one of the reasons why i got hired at right um as a contractor, like this and like my drawing ability, like it's just that like I've done a lot of different things and I can look at things from different angles. Um, and from that, you know, and from that and like the constant study, it's created its own style. It's not like super identifiable in that same sense, um, but it's like I, I'm a sum of all the people that came before me. Right, both the people I've worked with, um, the people I've admired, um, and the people like I've learned, you know, directly from. So, you know, for me as a as a character modeler, I like I, I fit into a part of game development that if I was too specific, like I couldn't branch out very easily. So like that would limit my work options and that would limit my usefulness to even within the same team, right? But if you're trying to be like a like a designer, like a concept artist, that's where that style becomes a little bit more important. Um, and that I think, you know, I can't speak with great confidence because I'm not from that field, but I do think that if you trust the process um, and you, allow yourself like the uh if you give yourself permission to not have everything figured out right away i think things come a lot more naturally than you give them credit for because like um there's i mean there's been a very long progression for me of like 
of what I've done, right? So like this is, I think this cut was like my one of my very first models that looks a lot more fancy than it is, is because of the lighting. So we kind of cheated there, you know, but like um, the progression of what I've leaned towards, like back then, like my aesthetics, my sense of taste um, has really dramatically evolved over the years, you know, from this is my first attempt at a game model. And this is like one of my first like professional game art models here. Leading to like the, the last few um, at, inside of the same company. Um, honestly, just don't worry about it. You know, like uh, just you're capable of doing a lot more than you give yourself credit for. Um, and things come together in the end. You know, like going from, this is a huge file. Uh, going from, you know, you know, this guy, I don't know where my navigator is, um, but all the way to you know, all the up to like which mercy, right? That like there's what 15 years difference there. So it's it's something that takes time, you know, not everyone can hit that immediately. And that's just like the, the unfortunate truth, but it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter how fast you get there, as long as you get there. And the only way you get there is if you just don't give up. That's, that's what I have to say about that. That's the best advice right there. Trust the process, keep going, stick with it, um, and never give up. We have another question. Are you wanting to go further with your art abilities or are you comfortable where you're at? You kind of answered some of this stuff, but we can go back to this question. Are you, uh, for example, working on a video game that's completely out of your art style or stick with the same style? Oh, I'm, I think I'm always looking to do something different. I mean, that was one of the primary reasons for me leaving um, Overwatch and going to Riot was because it was offering me something different and i had been on overwatch for let's almost eight years at that point so that was like a pretty considerable amount of time for me um i think i, th I think that's an interesting question because um, i mean it's almost a good it's almost good because you're not bored yet Right. You haven't gotten bored of it, which is why like you're probably wondering, like, oh well, well, should I change? Or like, is it good to change? But like you will you will at some point get bored of the things that you're doing. Which is also why like my I'm all over the place. Like I, I really I'm more interested in sort of like sh I don't want to say shoring up. Well, I, I guess it is kind of like shoring up like uh what I feel as perceived flaws in my work um but also like I, I just don't have quite that attention span either so thank you um so we have a question it, this is a pretty good one because um I talk about this a lot in drawing um I you the uh, question and statement is I utilize art as a form of therapy do you find that it helps with social anxiety and stress or adds to your stress and anxiety mm, I think that sort of depends on a few things but I think um definitely therapeutic um and I'm not, let's see here, let's, hold on, where's my, where is Zoom? How do I, oh, there we go. Um, I'm going to stop sharing so everyone can see me right now. So like, on the topic of therapy, right? Um, I think I alluded to it in the beginning, but This is something that I don't normally talk about and it's quite personal, but I think it's 
I think especially with uh, students, I think it's important to get across, right? I would say art saved my life. Um, yeah, like uh, I've had some like chronic health problems and there was a period of time where I just couldn't do any work at all. And like, I didn't know what to do, right? And so I ended up like just chasing art because I had nothing else at that point. Um, so I drew and I drew in a very hot, uh, weekly air conditioned apartment over in Tustin. Um, and it's just that I had no idea what would come from it. Uh, I only knew that it would, um, it was like my only escape from what was going on. So, you know, no matter, no matter what anyone here is going through, I hope you have that kind of escape, right? Not, you know, not just like a, from a fun perspective or from a career perspective, but for something that can actually, you know, free you from all the things that might happen to you. Um, I, I plan something a lot more eloquent than that, but <laughs> no, that's perfect. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. That's, that's very honest. Um, this is a question that I have. Um, what are some of the pros and cons of being part of a collectivist culture, such as the API culture and working in the gaming industry? Mm, oh yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, you know, working as a, in a collective, I think you sort of have to want it, right? Um, like the appeal of working on like a big franchise has to be something that you're drawn to, right? It can't, like, this can't be something that like, oh, you define success as a game artist or the like, success as a specific way. And that's the way, that's why you do it. Like you, you know, um, there's a lot of reward in being a cognitive machine, so to speak, right? You're, you're working with a lot of different people. You don't have like distinct ownership over something. Um, like you can't say for sure, like, oh, this is all something that I've done, right? Because, you know, you you and like 20 other people work on it. Um, so like the payoff for that is, is in the end when you can see it all come together. And that's like the most important, that's like probably one of the most important parts of working as like a collective. You know, unless you do things that you can't do easily on your own, like the scale of it is just like unimaginable. Um, and, you know, verse, and, but the cons are like, like I said, like you don't really have true ownership over things. Like sometimes decisions are made because of money and um, those decisions, like it's, it's like, it's frustrating when you're an artist and you see something from the beginning and it's like really awesome. Like it's like, it's like super creative. And then other people get involved, usually the business people, and then they, they water it down. And you're like, at the end, like, wait, what happened? Where, where, where did this, this thing go? Um, and you're like, at the end, like no one's like truly happy except for maybe the people who are really pulling in, in the money at that point, right? So. Um, I think that's one of like the, the, like the biggest cons of it. Um, working in a collective is also very safe and it's very stable. Uh, like it's a very, it can be a very lucrative career if you stick with it long enough. Um, um which is like something that I never considered before, right? Like I, I, when I started this career of mine, like I thought that I would like max out at like 40 grand a year. <laughs> like that's like, to me, that was like, like living at large at that point. But like, it's as far as careers in art and speaking to an AAPI audience, like with, and I'm sure everyone has like a very shared experience of 
unsupportive family, unsupportive parents, like money is a thing. This is one of the best ways as an artist to achieve that and to kind of get that recognition and that acceptance. Thank you. Uh, so what's the be your best achievement? What's your best achievement about you as an artist that you ever had? So what's your best artistic achievement? Um, let's see, I think it was 2014. Um, I was working on Dota back then, so I was still freelancing. And wait, I think I might have pictures of this somewhere. Um, So, um, you know, back then Valve was doing a lot of things like, like the international, right? It's the biggest esports event of the year, and it's been that way for a long time. Like there are millions and millions of dollars at stake here, and you know, coming up without really knowing it and seeing my art on the arena was just something that I, I never really considered in my entire life, really. And not only was it like in the arena, there were two banners on Key Arena in Seattle um, and they're huge. And there were only two of them and they both had my art on it. Like I had no idea this was happening. I had, you know, there was no forewarning at all, but I came in and it just blew me away. Like, I could, you know, the, you know, the kid who is, you know, making stuff like this in, you know, like, uh, in that time, you know, this was printed on a card. It was like a trading card that, you know, people could buy and you could, you know, give to other people as well. But like, like going from here to Key Arena, that was like, I just had never fathomed that, right? There's, and I don't know if I can ever beat that. Um, especially like as like a, a 3D modeler, like that, that just like not, that's like, it's still abnormal. Like I can't imagine it, but it happened. That's so cool. Um, so answer this if you can, but if you can't, don't worry, we'll skip this one. What was your favorite video game that you've ever worked on? Mm, Dota, which is the, the irony is, it's pretty deep here because I'm on League, so <laughs> so I'm working League of Legends. But I would say Dota was <laughs> like my my best. Thank you. Um, so um, Desiree wants to know: Do you notice uh, more men or women in your profession? Men, for sure. I think women have done really well in animation and being visible and like getting that door like open for them. I mean, there's not to say that they don't have their own issues and like, it's not to say that that industry is perfect towards women, but I feel like for sure they are way ahead of, of the gaming industry. And I, I think gaming has gotten a lot better, obviously, but like, it's still like right now, it's still not, I wish the representation was better. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. Uh, do you uh, still feel like working in video games helps you connect with your culture as an Asian American? Mm. I feel like it's kind of divorced from that for me right now. It's um, yeah, I, I think it might have to do with the sort of projects I've been on where it's not so narrative driven and it's been very like player versus player focus. Um, you know, the, the best we have is like working on an Asian character, right? Right, but like there's, it's pretty rare to see like a Southeast Asian. And you know, like there's, you know, you know East Asians is pretty easy, but like, but even then like Southeast Asian is like so rare. Um, And even like the stories sometimes too, like that we tell, like it, it, 
it never feels like we're really addressing anything. Um, there, there's usually not like a like a narrative that really like resonates with me. Yeah, thank you. Um, has learning different fundamentals of art caused you to lose any creative thinking when it comes to something like doodles or quick sketches? Yes. <laughs> I, I sometimes I wish I could go back to that. Uh, I was it, you know, um, Oh, wait, it's not here. Uh, sometimes I wish I could go back in time because I feel like I wasn't constrained about with like how good I am. I just did things, right? Like, for instance, where is it? Uh, like, this was like a, a 3D model in college that I, you know, I, I painted over. Um, I would never do this, like, because like I'm just so, like I already have like a preconceived idea of what's like good and what what my what I think should be my output. And since I work with so many amazing artists, like I, I'm never going to match that. So like I just freeze up and I just don't do it, right? <laughs> so there's a there's there's like a kind of a, a penalty of um, getting better at art and then having these unrealistic expectations that you put on yourself. You know, like stuff like this. I don't, I don't know why I did this, but like it's terrible. But I did it. But I would never do it, right? Like, these like half hour, um, forty five minute like speed paintings. Like there's just no way I would ever do it again. Um, and I wish I could break out of that. Yeah, I, I'm totally with you on that one. <laughs> it's it seems so much fun back then, and sometimes all that stuff you learn can be a block and you have to make it fun again sometimes. Uh, do you think in 20 years from now, you will still be doing art? Yes. Um, what kind of art? I can't say. Um, I think I would hope that um, by that time, my art will have shifted quite drastically. And I, I think that's because I typically, uh, like right now I consider myself like craftsman more than an artist. And part of that is just like where I fit, like my job, right? My job is to execute. Like I, you know, I work off of other people's designs. I make, you know, and it's my duty to sort of uh, make sure that it works in game and from different angles and stuff like that. And it's also a very technical job. So like it's, there's like, there's a lot, there's obviously art involved, but you know, I, I would also at the risk of, you know, triggering like all of my colleagues that I would say production art isn't really art. When you factor in huge amounts of money and um, there's sort of certain concessions that you have to make as like a, a game developer and, or even like in any sort of entertainment art that like it stops becoming art at that point. Because there, there isn't that like personal connection anymore. Like you're not expressing anything, and it's not meant to um, elicit a certain reaction. So I would hope that you know by 20 years, like I will have finally sat down and applied my skills into you know medium in a, in a work of art that was more meaningful than whether or not it was quote unquote cool. You know, stepping away from, from that kind of like mentality that I think I've been stuck in for a really long time. Thank you. Last question. We have a minute left. Thank you for everybody. I just, one quick question. Um, what would you tell your 18 year old self just thinking about art as a career? Um, Oh man, 18 year old self, uh, uh, stay away from social media. Social media is the devil. Uh, um, but like, I mean, on, on a serious note with that, I feel like, you know, chasing trends and comparing yourself can be very unhealthy and it doesn't, it, it forces you into 
thinking and acting a certain way and it limits you who you are personally right i think there's there's that um for me to like as someone who struggled with my own parents and my family about like my career choice i i would say you know stick with it in the end because you'll be amazed at the people you meet um the places you'll go the things that like you can't even imagine you know where your life is headed and the kind of like highlights that you know you'll be able to look back on and you'll be thankful for not having given up on art because I have thought about giving up on art like quite a few times actually so but you know like I said in the end art saved me so I'm I'm grateful Thank you. That was very beautiful and, and very honest, heartwarming and truthful. Drop some gems again. Thank you very much. Uh, do you mind if we share your contacts just in case any students out there have any questions? Oh, please do. Yeah. Well, can we put the contact in the chat, please? Thank you, everybody, for your time. We really appreciate it. We have another event tomorrow. So please look at the social justice website um, and hopefully we see you again tomorrow. Everybody have a good night. Thank you so much for having me.